with members of the U.S. legislative branch attempting to pass a $15 an hour federal minimum wage. There's a whole lot of discussion now over the merits of paying people more for a day's work. As of this video, the federal minimum wage is $7.25 an hour. Now let's say, for example, you work 40 hours a week for four and a third weeks a month. Now I know that many employers tend to cap minimum wage hours at just below full-time levels, and when people budget monthly expenses, they do it off of you know two paychecks a month, but I'm trying to be as generous as possible for the calculations further on. $7.25 an hour, 40 hours a week, four and a third weeks a month gets you $1,260 before anything gets taken out. For the purposes of this example, we're not taking any taxes or insurance out because, again, we're being generous. There's a rule called the one-third salary rule. It's a guideline to find a place to live that fits within your means that says that your rent shouldn't be more than one-third of your take-home pay. One-third of 1,260 is 420. So if you're someone making minimum wage, 420 is your target. Here's a mnemonic to remember that. As of 2020, the following 21 states have no minimum wage set, so they use the federal one. If you live in one of these states, you need to find a place to live that costs less than $420 in monthly rent. Looking at some of the random internet articles out there for the, the 25 cheapest places to live, I went hunting for apartment units that are lower than our limit across those cities. A third of them featured on the lists had no properties listed that met our criteria. Most of them had three or fewer across the whole city, while Springfield, Missouri, Florence, Alabama, and Memphis, Tennessee were the winners with listings in the double digits. Fun fact, Springfield, Missouri is not only on lists of top 25 cheapest places to live, but Missouri also has a state minimum wage of $10.30 an hour, so maybe everyone just needs to move there. Springfield fanboyishness aside, there is the issue of how everyone else will afford to live where they're living. Here's the top four solutions I came up with for this video. If you've come up with others, I'd love to hear them in the comments section. One, suck it up and live with a parent, relative, sugar parent, or friend who's better off in exchange for cheaper rent or favors or both. Choosing this option means you have parents, sugar or otherwise, friends or better off relatives who are willing to take you in at a discounted rate, so understandably, this may not be for everyone. 2. Tighten the purse strings regarding other utilities, food, entertainment, and everything else until you pull yourself up by the bootstraps and start making some actual money. Because if you're already scraping at the bottom of the barrel salary-wise, who needs to have things like internet or breakfast? 3. Get a second job. Like gold diggers chasing married men, employers love people who are already employed elsewhere. It shows value, higher ability, a good work ethic. This has the potential to double your income. And if you're working 16 hours a day, who needs entertainment or a decent living space in the first place? Note, you'd better pray both jobs don't want you at the same time. With the new hot thing being the gig economy, you can even make a good chunk of change driving drunk people home on weekends. And let's face it, if you're making minimum wage, you probably aren't doing anything on the weekends anyway. 4. Make your living space more interesting and affordable with a roommate. Shoving an extra person into a studio apartment is a great way to have more fun living alone. And it gives the extra bonus of cutting your rent in half. Also, utilities get shared. Chores get shared. There's no downside. Now, Divio, you're thinking, having a roommate sounds like the perfect idea. But what happens when you live anywhere other than the hundred cheapest places to live in the U.S.? The median rent for a one-bedroom apartment in my city is $1,000 a month. Even with one roommate, that's too much. That's fine. Just add more roommates. With three people living in a one-bedroom apartment, a $1,070 a month rent gets slashed to less than $360. With five people, a median two-bedroom apartment is split from $1,600 to $320. It's so easy. With all these solutions, it is plainly obvious that people are just blowing this whole minimum wage thing out of proportion. Live modestly, get an extra job, have wealthier financiers, or just simply shack up together. You can make living together in big groups a thing. Call it something like, I don't know, communism. If we keep the federal minimum wage thing down, surely communism will start catching on. Everyone will want to do it. 